रोल अदाय वाला हेलो एवरीवन आई एम माइथली अबोरी जोलॉजी फैकल्टी फ्रॉम इनफिनिटी लर्न वेयर लर्निंग इज इनफाइनाइट एंड फन सो हियर वी आर विद एन अदर टॉपिक फ्रॉम एनिमल किंगडम फाइलम प्लैटी हेलमिंथस दैट्स व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टुडे राइट सो प्रीवियसली uh if you go through my playlist we did cover uh, other phyla also so far from animal kingdom starting with basis of classification porifera nidaria tenophora so here we are presently in this class we are going to do the platy helminthes right so that's the phylum that we are uh, dealing with today do uh, check out our website and do appear for the score examination you are in for more a lot more so do attempt our score a uh, 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 largest talent search examination do visit our website and you get the details there right so with that said let's quickly start with platy helminthes as i were let's start with an amazing fact so a certain group of platy helminthes the planarians the free living forms uh, this is one which is showing remarkable regeneration capacity regeneration is something you know that they regenerate their body parts it's usually to you know overcome an injury say for example a very common example you would everybody know whether you are from the bio background or not the wall lizards right you see when their tail is cut they regrow that tail this caudal autotomy that is seen in these organis uh, organisms right regeneration is usually not uh, to overcome the injury it's not just that in these organisms but it is really really remarkable as you can see from the diagram there you cut these into different parts they can actually regenerate their head their brain right quite amazing organisms out there in the world so that's the fact that we are starting with now classification as far as the ncert is concerned is not important as you know nowadays neat examination is something that's quite confining to the ncert text so you can ask why the we are getting into the details of the classification right this particular phylum uh, we cannot generalize all the characteristics this is something that you will know as we go through the lecture today so for this i am going to quote certain organisms for which you need to understand this basis that is the reason why i put it up in the first slide otherwise ya yeah, classification is something that's a part of the old syllabus nowadays uh, uh, no it's not being questioned whether it board definitely know even the neat examination right so for your identification of which is which as we go through the general characteristics the platyhelminthes or the flat worms are classified into the turbellarians the planarians the free living forms that we just talked about right so uh, these are free living organisms which can be found uh, you know both in aquatic environment as well as terrestrial habitat within aquatic both fresh water as well as the marine the uh, example that we are discussing here the dugesia planaria is something that is a uh, you know uh, 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 something which is a free living form then we have trematoda the flukes these are mostly endoparasites the liver fluke is something that's a ncert given example endo is within parasite is something that dependent on their uh, for their food and shelter right and then we have cestoda the tapeworms which are also the parasites right tapeworm is something again which is a very easy example to remember as far as the platy helminthes is concerned so understand that we have three classes in here turbellaria trematoda and the cestoda there are free living forms there are endoparasitic forms as well they're mostly endoparasites but there are free living forms of these organisms as well now why the name why are we referring to these organisms as platy helminthes why the phylum name right it's basically because of their 
dorsoventrally flattened body. If you go through my previous lectures, you know that these are important terminology that we discuss in zoology, the anterior, posterior, dorsal, ventral, right? So, the dorsal usually for these organisms, the horizontal ones, the upper side dorsal, ventral, for us, of course, it would be the dorsal and this would be the ventral side. So, dorsoventrally flattened bodies, you look at these organisms, they flat organisms, which is why they are simply termed flat worms. So, platy meaning flat, helminths meaning worms, which is the reason why these organisms are referred to as the flat worms. You can see one right there uh, straight from the NCRT text, right? So, these have a dorsoventrally flattened bodies, which is why they are referred to as flat worms. Right? So, hence the name platy helminth is quite easy to remember. Platy is for flat helminths for the worms. Right? So, as I already said, these are endoparasites, endo meaning within. They are organisms that are within, uh, living inside the host. Uh, it may be human beings, sheep, dog. So, these are organisms that are being parasites in different organisms. They are mostly endoparasites including human beings and there are free living forms also. So, this is one life cycle that I have put. We will uh, get to that in the later point of time, one more slide as well. So, these are the organisms which are free living as well as parasitic forms. So, they are bilaterally symmetrical. What do we understand by this word? In basis of classification, we did learn about this. You can cut this organism into two equal halves or the mirror images or the antimeres by one plane of axis which is passing through the center. See right there the dotted blue line that you see, you can cut this organism into two equal halves. Bi is for two lateral for the sides. So, this is organism which is exhibiting bilateral symmetry for the first time in the course of evolution. Make a note children because we dealt with porifera which are asymmetrical. Some of them are radially symmetrical but mostly asymmetrical. Do not exhibit any particular geometric body plan which can be cut into two equal halves. Right? Any plane possible. And then we have Nidaria and Tenophora. So, these are two phyla which are exhibiting radial symmetry. Radial symmetry is where you get two equal halves as long as the plane of division is passing through the center, right? So, here we are for the first time in the course of evolution, the flatworms exhibit what is called as bilateral symmetry. Now, what is the advantage with the bilateral symmetry? The sensory structures tend to concentrate on the anterior side. So, with this what happens? There is formation of the head structure. What are we referring to this particular phenomenon? It is what is called as the cephalization, right? The formation of head structure. What is it called? Cephalization. This is possible because of bilateral symmetry. It is more sensitive in the environment, right? It is more uh, uh, being able to sense the environment. It is uh, able to capture its food. It is able to protect itself from the predators, right? So, bilateral uh, symmetry in the course of evolution is something that has enabled cephalization. Quite an important milestone, remember you people as far as the course, the evolution is concerned, right? Triploblastic, again another first timer, remember? Nitaria tinophora, what is the level of organization exhibited by them? It's a tissue level of organization. Going back further, porifera, cellular grade of organization. So, this is something which is exhibiting the next level. It's the organ level of organization with a triploblastic Triploblastic, what does that mean? Triplo is for three primary germ layers, right? It is something that is having three primary germ layers, which are the ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. 
going back Neteria tenofera were diploblastic they had only ecto and endoderm they did not have a clear differentiated mesoderm so here is where there is a mesoderm also it's a triploblastic organisms it has three primary germ layers ecto meso and endoderm and then they are a coelomates so what did i tell you that little trick about different terminology as far as zoology is concerned a meaning absence a coelomates so these are organisms which are without the coelom they do not have a body cavity so how, how is the body plan like it's filled up with the tissue a specialized tissue which is what is referred to as parenchyma a specialized tissue is something that's filling up the whole body it's what is called as the parenchyma and it, we are referring to such a body plan as the solid bob plan what do we call such a bob plan it's body plan it's a solid bob plan they do not have any space within it's a solid bob plan that is observed in these organisms with a organ level of organization so quickly recalling flatworms they are bilaterally symmetrical right they can be cut into two equal halves by a single plane of division passing through the center right and then we have what triploblastic organisms they are having three primary germ layers ectoderm mesoderm endoderm and then what a coelomates a absence no coelom coelom body cavity is not there in these organisms it's a coelomate and then we have organ level of organization right so when and where we are advancing through the uh, especially these uh, phyla the non chordate phyla and the animal kingdom it's always always important to recall the general characteristics of the previous phyla that's the best way you remember all these phyla and their general characteristic you don't have to mug really it's it's all about comparing and contrasting you study this today you also compare it with all the previous phyla that you have studied uh, previously right so that's the only thing this this really not necessary that you need to you know mug up with that you it's there is always a tendency a chance a risk that you may forget during the examination right so try and recall and recollect that's the only thing you can do as far as bio is concerned and do it passionately right then we have body covering so this is the reason why i did with the classification there is safura if i got your name correctly sorry if i got it wrong uh, thank you uh, keep watching infinity learn and do register yourselves for the score examination right so yeah the body covering as far as these organisms are concerned we talked about the free living forms the parasitic forms right so as far as pre, uh, free living forms are concerned the planarians are concerned they you see that there is a ciliated epidermis uh, graphic designers have done a great job on that diagram just for you to understand how the body is looking like this is ciliated uh, you know uh, epidermis that you can see in these organisms on the other hands the parasitic forms the flukes as well as the uh, the tapeworms what do they have they have an outer tegument now remember you guys tegument plays a very very important role it's helping with the absorption of the nutrients it doesn't have a digestive system yes we are going to talk about the blind sac bob plan also but as far as this these forms are concerned the tapeworms they do not have a digestive system only the external outer covering is helping with absorption of the nutrients also is helping it to survive in the harsh environment within the host right in within the body there are very harsh environmental conditions that these parasitic forms need to survive with so that's why that's how the tegument is something that is helping them with absorption of nutrients and protecting them as well right then a coelom this is something that we have discussed this no body cavity as you can see uh, it is filled with a specialized tissue called the parenchymal tissue and they have a solid bob plan i did tell you this no cavity at all so what are we referring to such a body plan it is what is called as a, the solid bob plan right the space within the gut and the body wall is filled with the parenchymal tissue right 
organs of anchorage now when they are living within the host body they need a certain anchorage right it needs to be uh, able to stay in a certain region of the body it needs to anchor itself to a certain body part so how does it do it has certain structures which help with it so in the free living forms now this is something which is not living inside the host remember that's how the characters are made easy you know in case you just keep on mugging no hooks and suckers no hooks and suckers it it just flies away just try to understand it logically now this is a free living form which is living out there in the external environment not within the host so does it really need structures of anchorage no it doesn't have hooks and suckers on the other hand these are the parasitic forms so what does these flukes have look at these suckers that they have which helps with the attachment and in the tapeworms you can see those hooks as well as the suckers which help with holding on to the organs within the host right the parasitic forms have such structures free living forms do not right and the digestion i did tell that in certain uh, of the free living forms for example we are talking about it's an incomplete gut what did we learn in basis of classification right there are uh, the as in when the um, organ systems are getting complex right there's a complete digestive system incomplete open blood vascular system closed blood vascular system we did deal with it before right so here we are talking about incomplete digestive system why are we calling it incomplete what makes it complete a digestive system is something that has two openings right it starts with the mouth ends with the anus now that's what is called as a complete digestive system what if it has a single opening right which is allowing both ingestion as well as egestion it is the same opening that's helping with both ingestion taking in the food as well as egestion of the fecal or the metabolic waste right so that is what is an incomplete digestive system because of such a structure you can see it's an opening is present only on one end so why not call it definitely a blind sac it's a blind sac bo plan that we have there so mouth is used both for ingestion as well as egestion anus is something that is absent so and some others they just absorb the nutrients look at the previous one right so only the outer tegument is something that is helping with you know the absorption of substances it doesn't have at all like the tapeworms on the other hand some others have this kind of a gastrovascular cavity another beautiful diagram that's put up see there's only a mouth structure that's present in these organisms which is allowing both ingestion as well as the egestion right and then there is respiration and circulation there are no respiratory or circulatory structures in these organisms you did it know that this parenchymal specialized tissue right that itself help uh, helps a bit with the diffusion of the substances within the body right so they do not have a very specific respiratory circulate remember again try to recall the parasitic forms they are living in harsh conditions within the human body they have to maybe live in anaerobic conditions right so no specific respiratory structures there so this is something that's important you can relate with class 12 also in human health and diseases helminthic adaptations the parasitic adaptations right those which are uh, uh, you know supposed to uh, carry on their life cycle within inside the host right there are ectoparasites also which live outside the body endo especially are the ones which have lot of adaptations right they get rid of all unnecessary structures most of them do not have locomotory structures they do not locomote inside the body they do not have sensory structures they are living in a controlled environment so all these are going to help you with class 12 syllabus also try and always relate things right so Th this is one other very 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 important as far as neat is concerned if at all you are getting an mcq it's mostly the flame cells the proto nephridia what are these 
these are the cells that are helping with excretion in these organisms. The flame cells or the proto-nephridia, you can see that they are distributed throughout the free living forms within. Why are these called flame cells? Look at that bunch of cilia there, right there in the pink color. So, these are structures which cilia usually are some things which are existing in a bundle together unlike flagella which is a singular structure. So, these cilia are some things which are beating continually to take in all the uh, metabolic waste to attract the metabolic waste inside which in turn is excreted out through the excretory tube, right. So, this kind of beating of the cilia when you are looking at the structure it looks like a flickering candle flame which is why these are referred to as the flame cells right very very important these are the ones which are primarily osmoregulatory in function and secondarily they are excretory in function. In excretion chapter we are going to talk about three major uh, ways especially it is ammonia, urea, uric acid these are the ones which are excreting ammonia which is why they are referred to as the ammonotelic organisms they are the ammonotelic ones. The nervous system where did we first ever look at the primitive neurons appearing? It is the phylum nidaria, a polar neurons. So, there are diffuse neurons without any dendrites or axons that have first made it appearance forming a diffused network, right. So, here is where there is a little more of advancement. There may be one to three pairs of these longitudinal nerves like this and which may be connected like this by the commissural nerves. So, how does it look like? Literally a ladder, right? So, what kind of nervous system uh, usually named for the questions and all ladder like nervous system is found in, it is it's found in your old PMT papers as well. It will be in the platyhelminthus. What about sensory structures? I already told you parasitic forms, do they really need sensory structures when they are living in a controlled environment? Most of them do not have the or reduced in the parasitic forms. On the other hand, they are common in the turbularians. How nicely is it put? The free living forms require them, they are there. The parasitic forms do not. So, they are not there in these organisms. So, reproduction sexes are not separate. So, what do we call them? Hermaphrodites. They do have both male as well as female reproductive. In the tapeworms, if you observe the segments, they are not actual segments, but it is a pseudo metamerism are referred to as the proglottids. They are some things which are, uh, you know, undergoing the uh, fertilization within or two other proglottids. It is quite complicated in order to be able to uh, increase the chances of survival, high reproduction capacity, right. So, sexes are not separate, but there are certain organisms, say for example, the schistosoma, which is unisexual. That means sexes, sexes are separate, right. Fertilization is internal and copulatory organ may be present in some development, quite complicated life cycle. Again, this is something you will find in class 12. The uh, life cycle is usually complicated in these organisms. They undergo many uh, uh, stages. The larval stages, obviously, it is indirect development. There is something polyembryony that is observed in flukes. There are many, many larval stages that you observe in their life cycle, right? So, this is the complicated life cycle I was talking about. So, you can see that there is a miracidium larva which forms the sporocyst redae and then forms the circarial larva, metacircaria and then finally it gets into the adult stage. Uh, luckily for you, you do not have to actually remember all these stages. It is beyond NCRT. What I am trying to just say is it has got a complicated life cycle. It exhibits what is called as polyembryony where it is not just one embryo that is giving rise to one, but in between there are parthenogenetic structures which would give rise to more and more forms of this organism, which is a phenomenon called polyembryony. Again, that is also beyond. What you need to understand is these firms, lower organisms, they really, really have high reproductive capacities to uh, increase the chances of survival and continue the race, right. So, important examples 
you need to know Dujasia, the planaria, fasciola hepatica, the liver fluke, and the tinea solium, the tapeworm. Of course, I did list schistosoma and then tinea saginata, echinococcus and all. But as far as NCRT is concerned, you need to remember three examples, especially planaria, fasciola and tinea. Very important. Uh, or the examples given in the NCRT text at least is something that you need to understand. As I always, always say, make a list of them, put it somewhere where you can see every day and that's the only way you can remember this stuff, right? So, what are some things which have appeared for the first time in platyhelminthus? Triploblastic condition, definitely, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. The mesoderm has made its appearance, this true muscle tissue, organ level of organization, bilateral symmetry, you can cut this organism into two equal halves, unidirectional movement, cephalization, the digestive system, which although incomplete, but still, excretory system, the flame cells, very, very, very important flame cells or referred to as proto-nephridia, proto meaning first, right? And the brain, of course, right? So here's the quiz, as I always give from the uh, day, uh, the uh, topic that we discussed that particular day. So why is phylum platyhelminthus named so? Because of their body feature. What is that? It has got a dorsoventrally flattened body. It has got a dorsoventrally flattened body. And hence they are called the flatworms. So the name platyhelminthus. Flame cells help in. What do flame cells help in? Quickly guys. There is a defense, excretion, locomotion, reproduction. It is something that is helping with the excretion, right? Then, in the course of evolution, organ level of organization is first ever exhibited by the Ganphylum platyhelminthus, previously Nidaria tenophora tissue, porifera cellular. Define cephalization, the formation of a distinct head because of the concentration of the sensory structures on the anterior end. It makes it more sensitive to the environment and it, it's helping with the formation of a distinct head. Although moderately, it did happen with the platyhelminthus. Hooks and suckers in tapeworm aid in. Why are they even there? The hooks and suckers, they are helping with the anchorage. They are the structures that are helping with anchorage, holding on to the organs with in the host. Yes, Prem, that's nice to see uh, an answer from you, Prem Reddy. Uh, thank you all. Happy learning. Thanks for watching. Do log on to our website. Do register yourselves for score. You are in for more infinite ways of studying, infinite of information and infinite fun as well, right? Keep watching, keep learning, keep visiting in our website for the examinations and the courses, right?